felt the strain in the darkness inside my head and I struggle I felt the strain in the feeling in my soul will it go away Will it go away? Will it end? I wanna know Will it end sometime? Oh, we're free, willing it all Will it end? When will it end? When will it end? When will it end?
funny. I um, was going to start the thing without uh, any fanfare and no, no intro, nothing. Just going to start. But um, I wound up messing around and I had some ideas, so I was trying to remember them before, before it went away. Right? It does sound really old. <laughs> ah, the beauty of these things. I like, I love these machines. I really do. So hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. How are you this Friday? Um, there was no fanfare for tonight. Um, there was no flyers. I didn't do anything because I just have not had time. It's been a crazy, crazy week. Both good and bad, but, um, uh, you know, nonetheless, busy, <laughs> as usual. Um, let me know if I sound okay and, and you can hear everything, because uh, I was rewiring in here um, to get the room to be a little quieter, and it seems to be working out, um, but uh, I just want to make sure it all works, so... I hope, I hope everything was okay, because if it wasn't, <laughs> we're in trouble because I was singing earlier. And then we're in more trouble because if it didn't sound right, then I'm crazy. Oh, cool. Everyone says it sounds good. Awesome. So what I've been doing, does it sound good? <laughs> uh, what I've been doing was uh, changing a few things in the studio to uh, not just get the mic to sound better, because... Honestly, I have enough mics to make things worse, better. But um, I wanted an in-between where I could sing and speak. So I kind of like cheated a little bit so that, you know, when I want to speak, I can, uh, uh, you know, do my thing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, hi. <laughs> um, let me say hi to some people. Let's see. Who's here? Hey, Robert. Nice to see you here. And guess what? I'm, I've got your request, my friend. Um, Marlene is here. Uh, lots of people on YouTube and Facebook tonight. David, Faga. Hi, Faga. We're going to talk about Faga, too. Um, Jacob, Emilio's here. Nice. Awesome, Emilio. I've got news for you, too. Carrie's here. TMT Mixes, Kevin Jones, Wendy, Jack Mode, Maya's here, thank you, um, Paul, man, lots of you, thank you, thank you for tuning in, um, hopefully I won't be too annoying, <laughs> um, but uh, welcome, it's been a rough, rough week, I can tell you that, um, not in a bad way, Um I wound up doing a, a podcast on Tuesday, uh, which uh, was about NFTs, and that was kind of cool. Uh, met another artist, got to hang out, and um, learned a little bit more than, than I knew about the world of CBD and things like that. So, so that was interesting. But um, uh, more to the point... One of the things that happened this week was that, um, well, I'm going to make it official here. I'm going to have my own coin. So, yes, I'm going to have my own Ethereum coin, which is really weird. It's, it's a really weird thing to say. But, yes, I will actually have my own cryptocurrency. And it's weird. It's an opportunity. It came my way. I said, sure, let's try this. And so it's happening it is going to be an ECR20 token, which means it's on the Ethereum network. Uh, fans will be able to earn them. And um, I have a plan for these. It's going to be interesting. But anyway, I'm going to play a song. And then we'll, 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 we'll talk about this and other things further. So for starters, I, I think I'm going to play. So by the way, None of the songs from tonight are um, in any way, shape, or, or form planned, uh, except for one or two, which I thought would be kind of fun. 
So, as I set it up here, oh gosh, I should have done this earlier. Maybe it's going to start all messed up. So, I'm going to start with um, this weird one, which is the closest that we've ever gotten to like the real pop world. So, I'm going to play this song, and I'm going to try to let you figure out why I played it, but then when I come back, I'll explain it, but... I will appreciate if you guess why I chose this particular song to play. Um, here we go. And we'll turn on the uh, UFOs. <laughs> Forgot this was there. This is actually the end of this song. 
and I forgot. Ah, nice. Ooh, Todd, you're so close. You're so close. So here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I think I just put it in there, if I'm not mistaken. But if not, I'll put it down again. The uh, coin is going to be that. You can earn an A-box. <laughs> I figured that um, I figured that it would be cool that uh, the short named of anything box should be the coin. So A-box it is. So yes, you're going to be able to earn A-boxes, which is kind of funny to me. But... Um, yeah, so Wendy just asked, yeah, outro. Yeah, that was, I'm on my way. And the outro of that, that piano part, actually leads into the next song, but it's technically the end of this song. But, so yeah, so, um, yeah, it's really weird. It's on a, it's on a new app. It's going to be a social app. Um, and I got in really early and, um, I was really surprised that I actually got invited in, and it was really cool. It's called Roll, and uh, you know, and uh, it's going to be very, very cool. I got I I have uh, an ES, ERC twenty token called A Box. A Box fans will be able to earn them. I will be able to gift them. I will be able to drop them. And yes, one of the very first things I'm going to do is. Every single follower on Facebook that we have, every single follower that I have on Twitter, every single follower that I have on YouTube, especially YouTube, and Bandcamp, I'm going to hit you with a bunch of coins. <laughs> and I'm going to just, I think we're going to just give out a box loot. <laughs> and then later, you'll be able to trade that for stuff for other stuff. So it's going to be cool. So, um... The particulars, I believe, are that there will be 10 million total, and no more than that will ever be minted. And um, I think I'm going to have at my disposal about a million or so to give away. <laughs> so that'll be awesome. It just seems funny to me because I never would have imagined all this. And here I am doing that, which is weird, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So, did you figure out why I played that song? Did did you figure it out? <laughs> it's a very silly reason, actually. But I played it because I feel like I'm on my way. I'm, like, on my way there now to fix some, some old things and, you know, make it nice again for A-Box. So, I'm, I'm really working towards that. So, it's nice to be able to... Pull that off. I'm going to move the mic. Hold on. Ah, this might be noisy. Sorry. There we go. Now I can be more relaxed. Oh. So, yeah, it's going to be really cool. Uh, so, Abox will have its own social token when its page becomes available, which means that's going to be a place where people will be allowed to follow Abox. Allowed. But you know what I mean. <laughs> people will be able to follow Abox there. And, um, you know, I don't know if you've been following my posts as of late, especially during 2020, but I'm on my way out of out of the traditional social media. I'm like really moving slowly away from it. And there's some new stuff that man, like when you see how cool that other world is, it's just so cool that um you know, I hope you'll follow me there and all these other cool places, but anyway, but in other news, so I know that the 12 inch is on its way. Um, we should have it on time, but vinyl does take a little longer. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I've been working on back end code of the vinyl for the entire week, literally six hours a day in code. I'm like knee deep. But the beauty of it is that certain things are going to come out that are like just so random that you're not going to even believe that it's real, that it's happening. But I'm telling you, there's going to be some really crazy stuff happening in the next couple of weeks. Um, 
Todd asked me, will the number, will the mystery of 300-2731, you know, I actually thought of making that a song. <laughs> 300-2731. I don't know, something. I'm kidding. But um, part of it, I mean, I can tell you some of it now, but it would spoil it. I'd rather show you. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> but, uh, oh, Sue says, happy 50th Quarren stream. You know what's funny? I almost wasn't going to call it the 50th because I didn't actually do any flyers or anything. So I'm considering doing two 50s, but I'm not sure. I mean, maybe we can get away with it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, uh, ooh, Claudio B. wrote, Eight six seven five three zero nine. Yeah, that won't, won't that won't be it. But um, but I want to share something with you that I talked about in that uh, particular podcast that I think most Ebox fans know, or if you follow the site from the beginning, you would know. But most people don't know this. I've been wanting to hide stuff and have stuff show up um, way, this is going back a long time ago. I wanted this to happen during the Worth album. I wanted this to happen um, on the Hope CD. If you ever listen to the Hope CD, when it ends, technically, you know, the voice says, this is the end of the CD. You can turn it off now. You can turn it off now. And there was a reason why we had those kinds of things in there. Um Every number that's ever been on an Anything Box album meant something, but nobody really knew that it meant something because I had no way of making the connection. In other words, I knew I wanted to hide something, but I didn't know how to hide it. And the code, the aspects of code weren't there yet for me to learn. So what I did instead, which was really weird, which is why it's a little bit of a cheat to, to tell you this now, but only you guys will know this, is that... I made it so that it's retroactive. I can go back and I can tell you that there are secrets on the Peace album. I can tell you that there are secrets on the Hope album. I can tell you there are secrets on literally every record that we've put out. But most of those were never found because I never coded parts of it. So imagine like now to be able to say, you know, that that has become unlocked. So who knows what you're going to find soon going to be awesome. So <laughs> someone said, I won't buy Sony coin. I won't either, but uh, a box coin is good. <laughs> so let's play a song. So this request is from Robert. This came from Robert and he said, would you talk about this song and play it? And it's kind of going to set the tone for the evening because a lot of the songs that I'm playing tonight have something in common and um, they're going to it's something that I'm going to explain as we go along I just got some uh, interesting news um, literally 10 minutes before I came on the quarantine stream which um, is worth sharing um, the ADAT tapes that were sent to get uh, transferred they're almost done. And as far as uh, the engineer told me, there were no issues, which means all of them were intact. All the files have been decoded. Now they're going to transfer them to a hard drive and they're going to be on their way back by next week. So like that makes me excited. So let's explain this song. Um, this song um, is from Recovered. Um, which is funny because I was talking to Robert this afternoon and he brought this up. So I'm going to just paraphrase what Robert told me on the phone. My friend Robert, in case you don't know, he's also like my manager. <laughs> um, one of them, uh, cause I, I seem to have more than one now, but it's okay. We're going to, we're going to consider it this way. Uh, for the moment, Mikey and Robert are my managers, <laughs> and Steve. <laughs> That's my team. But um, go a box. No, I'm kidding. But um, and Emilio too. <laughs> but uh, 
he he was talking with me on the phone and he said that when he found the recovered album he was looking at the uh he was literally looking at the cover art and the interior art and he thought there's a there's some sort of secret code in here and I'm going to find it and he was searching for some secret code and it's funny because there was a secret code in there I just couldn't figure out a way to tie it together because the technology that I needed wasn't there. Now it is. So, yeah, that recovered album is going to become important. I'm just telling you. But anyway, this song is from Recovered, and I'll tell you about the song when we come back. Have you ever held the teardrops that have fallen from above? Angels fell to earth in spite of all their pleas and sobs. Do you ever touch the water that is salted from their pain? All the hundred million faces you collected from. joy in holding all these vials away have you opened up the contents of a young bride's broken heart do you ever hear the cries or do you steal them in the dark have you often dreamed in loneliness all beckoned by the stars
listen to the vocal trail off. So, every artist, every musician, every poet, every writer, everyone does this, okay? Um, you write a song, you record it, you paint a picture, you put it out, whatever it is. Later, you change your mind about something and you're like, oh, I wish I would have done that different. I wish I would have change that color, that beat, that whatever. There's always that something that happens where you almost wish you could have done it. Mine for that particular song was always that that last vocal. I wish that I could have just had it a little louder towards the end when it fades out. But here's the thing. So here's what's going to uh, tie the songs together tonight. That's one of the songs where all the vocals are on one of those tapes that's coming back. So I, I can't wait to give that to people to remix and to have fun with it because all those vocals will be there. No fades, nothing. I wish the music was there too, but it's not. It's just the vocals, but it's just crazy. Crazy that I'll have these back. So yeah, the entire Recovered album, all its vocals are being transferred. So I will have them. And they're on their way. They're going to be on their way back. I just can't wait to hear them. So I'm like, oh my God. The reason that it's so odd too is that you don't know if there could be like a stray B-side that like snuck in there that all of us forgot about. So who knows what's on those tapes? I honestly don't know. It's going to be fun listening to those. So man, I can't wait. <laughs> so... What you're hearing um, is going to be songs that have the potential now to be remixed. That's what you're going to hear. But this particular song um, has two interesting tidbits that I wanted to just throw out there as trivia. So one is that it was written, uh, the lyrics were not quite done. And they came to me after I watched this episode of... Tales from the Dark Side, and it was called The Teardrop Collector. So if you ever look at The Teardrop Collector, you might get a clue as to something that's hidden about this album that no one ever found. So that's an interesting thought to me. So if you find that Tales from the Dark Side and you watch it, I'm guaranteeing you that there's something in there that may just be interesting. So that's that's all I'm going to say about that. So Mikey's asking me if I got the test pressings yet. I have not. But then again, I didn't go to the post office today because uh, I was literally knee deep in code. I woke up at 7 and I was working on code up until <laughs> I want to say about 5 uh, and then I was like, it was it burned me out. Like, literally, that stuff burns me out. So you're going to have to watch it, Robert. You're going to have to watch Tales from the Dark Side and see what there is to be seen. Um, maybe I'll have to sample a bit of it and put it in next week's Corin stream. And maybe we'll find out what that was all about. But the trivia about that particular song is that that literally, literally was the very first time I ever used Reactor. True story. And it was not called Reactor then. It was called Generator, I believe. It was the, the precursor to Reactor. It was very clunky. And it was called Generator. And that's where the drums come from. So... Trivia. Digital trivia. <laughs> so, anyway, when I was doing this talk, um, we were talking about the idea that um, I was really happy about NFTs because now, 
things that were previously hidden can be made to be quests. And I love that kind of stuff. So it's going to be fun. So thank you, by the way, to everyone that's been pre-ordering the record. That's awesome. I really, really appreciate that support. You don't even know like how crazy that is for me. And I know it's it's important to Mike too, because this is his first label. This is his first label project, and I wanted it to be successful. <laughs> I was like, are you sure you want to do this? Um, but he seems to be happy, um, and it seems to be going okay. So, yes, yes, yes. So that was awesome. It's doing good. And um, some elements of that 12-inch have yet to be revealed. So you may find this out for yourself later, but just realize that the 300 copies of that record, all of them, come with an, an NFT in it. So after that, who knows what else is in there? Because I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff inside that record. But that's all I'm going to say about that for now, because I'm having fun working on this code. So I want you to be, you know, but I'll show you how to decode things too, if that makes sense. I don't know. Maybe it does. But um, getting back to the coin, I'm jumping around a lot, I know. But getting back to the coin, I'm, I'm really excited about that. But that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, this has been a week where I've been bombarded with news. Good not so good, in between, productive news, not so productive news, but it's been happening like like a barrage. Um, so it's been crazy, crazy trying to keep up with it all. Um, still no shows, but that's okay. I'm, 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 I'm coming to grips with that side of it right now where I know that at the moment this is this is life, but shows are coming, it's going to happen, and they're going to be better. I think they're going to be better than they were because they're going to be so like, mm, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know, I feel it. So, um, someone said, share a link to buy one. You mean the NFTs? If that's what you're talking about? Not yet. Uh, they're coming. I mean, they're all set. The, actually, one of them is escaped. <laughs> One of them escaped without me trying. Uh, there's a couple of tests we have to run uh, this weekend. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll figure it out. Um, but at any rate, I think it's time to play a song. Unless I didn't answer the questions that you guys had for me. But feel free to ask questions, by the way. I love getting your questions. I do see them. Uh, the beauty of the way that I have everything set up now is that I can literally see the chat right in front of me, which is awesome, and I can respond right away, which is kind of cool, although it is distracting. I, I, it's like I want to read more than I want to talk, so it's kind of cool. So anyway, I'm going to play a song, and uh, this particular song, because I didn't put these in order, um, oh, I remember. So this one, this one's from the Hope album. And um, I'll let you decide why I decided to play this particular song. But ask questions. Ask, ask, ask. And I shall answer them. But here we go.
I was getting into it. You know, I, I never talk about this kind of stuff. I mean, I do with you guys, but it like, I don't know. I never get asked these questions on interviews, so it's it's a little odd. But this song, um, like the entire song was done, but there was no words. There was no lyrics to this song. And um, I was going back, back in my head, and I was remembering the very first time I recorded, and it was in this factory with my uncle, and it was really late at night, and I snuck into this bathroom, and I, I recorded in there. And it was just like an amazing experience to be three in the morning in a factory trying to get songs done. And I think I was like 17 it's like crazy stuff like I would remember. And um, so I wrote that down and that got put into the song. And so that became a memory. Now, obviously, people take from it whatever they want. So I don't like to give meanings to songs because then that ruins it for someone. But um, I kind of feel like that's happening in a weird way again. Like these are times when I have to kind of like sit down and remember everywhere I was because things are changing so fast and um, on all levels. So I'm trying to keep, I don't know, keep hold of it, I guess, and, and hang on to it, you know? Oh. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Yes, my, yes, I'm going to say what my saying on Facebook. I cannot bring up that Eminent Soul did a lovely job on their cover of this song for the tribute album. You're absolutely right. And I was so tempted, by the way, absolutely tempted to play that version instead. Um, because it really is really good. Um, so thank you. Thank you for mentioning it. And by the way, that tribute album is still still rad and it's still an amazing thing and I don't talk about it enough so it's a good reminder thank you um I'm still working on the CD version of that think about that too I've been working on that as well and that's like there's so many things that I've been trying to get finished before this month is off that uh uh it's been tough hi synth gamer uh coming into us switching over from twitch over to youtube Nice. Thank you. Uh, although I love Twitch, too. I hope you're watching on Twitch. Um, coming at you live from who knows how many different places. I'm trying to get my my uh, streaming in different ways, but thank you. Uh, Jorge says, saludos de Peru. Buenas noches. <laughs> or is it early in the morning over there? So I'm going to answer a question that came up, sorry, which was... Did I retain the MIDI information to most of the albums? Well, the sad answer to that question is no. Um, when we were recording, and very specifically, Peace, Worth, Hope, and up until Universe, using uh, an MPC. And although the MPC saves MIDI files as, quote, sequence files. At the time, there was no real way to uh, transfer those to a computer that was readable. And uh, I had them saved for a rainy day. Like, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll keep all the floppy disks, because they were on floppy disks. I will keep all the floppies in a safe box. And what will happen is when I move, and um, eventually some tools will come out to convert these, and I'll be able to convert them back into MIDI files, and then I'll be able to resequence them or, you know, at least rearrange them. Well, we had a flood, and water got in, damaged every single floppy. Like, by the time we found them, they were literally moldy and destroyed, um, along with hope posters and a bunch of peace posters that we had. There's a lot, a lot of stuff that was in my studio at that time uh, got damaged. So they're gone. There's no way to get those back. 
So no, unfortunately, there are no files that could be retrieved. The fact that the ADATs uh, didn't get damaged was a miracle. They were in a, and of all things, they were in a cardboard box, but they survived because they were on a high shelf. And so, you know, I'm happy that uh, we were able to convert them at least. So now at least we'll have the vocals, but I do have timing information on there. So I, I should be able to extrapolate th that kind of data. And then, you know, we'll see. Who knows, man? Who knows? <laughs> uh, Emilio Puentes on Facebook says, oh my God, I wish I really hadn't asked that. It's okay. But at least, you know, this is why that, that adage remains true to this day. Make sure you back up your data. Make sure you back up. Because if you don't, you're going to lose stuff. Sooner or later, you will lose things. But, um, <sighs> so yeah, so busy week. So yes, about 10 minutes before the stream, I got an email that the vocals have been near, nearly all the tapes have been transferred. No problems thus far. And, um, they'll be on their way back this week, which is awesome. Again, that's great news. That means remixes and some good stuff's going to happen. The other news that I woke up to that was pretty wild was that uh, it was funny to me, but it, it just it's just one of those weird things because this was not planned. Uh, Flex Seal, the company that makes the liquid rubber that I use for art stuff, they tweeted this morning and showed two of my paintings and uh, basically calling them <laughs> classics or something. And so I got a, a barrage of uh, direct messages on Twitter and a lot of uh, a lot of cool attention from Twitter this morning because of that. And it was cool because it made my day because some of those are things that I've been working on as first NFTs. So it's pretty crazy. I, and actually, I, I have some that I wanted to show you. I should be in infomercials. You're so funny, Thomas. Um, and if you order now, I'll give you an extra fork. <laughs> in the road. <laughs> I don't know that I'd work on infomercials, but at least we're hanging out, right? So anyway, thank you for hanging out, by the way, all of you. Thank you for hanging out, because that means more to me than anything else. Just want to say, that means the world to me that we're all hanging out. But what I think is funny is that, so first of all, I do not work for Flex Seal. I uh, don't have any connection to them whatsoever, other than I sent them an email once um, about the pink Flex Seal because that was a limited edition, I guess. I thought you could just go buy pink all the time and you can't. And uh, I had worked up like this entire series based on pink and black. And so, oh my God, uh, to be out of pink was like a nightmare. I was like, no, you can't be out of pink. And that's how I started talking to them about like, oh, well, I do art with it. And, you know, they were kind of surprised like art. I'm like, yeah, it's like really weird stuff I do with it. So I showed them showed them some stuff, and they're really cool, man. So Flex Seal for art, kick ass. <laughs> anyway, so that's the infomercial. Flex Seal. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm being silly, but but it's just you know. Oh, Mai says I have one of the pink Flex Seal paintings with with uh, a scarf with the. One of the pink Flexio paintings printed on it. Thank you. I know you do. That's awesome. And I'm happy that you, you should you should do a post of that picture. I mean, you should post a picture of that. Because that's about to become a really weird limited edition, you know. Because um, some of the prints are going to have to come down now. Because there's like a, it's a weird thing. I have to kind of like figure out what's going into the printing, what's not going to be printed. So anyway. I'm going to play a song, and uh, it will relate to another thing that happened today. And it just so happens that, like, this is the way the universe works. I just want you to know. It's like a strange, even if you don't believe me, even if you think that what I'm saying sounds like nuts, just think about it for a second. So I got this message from Flexiel early this morning. 
I knew that I was going to talk about the Flex Seal stuff, even if the Twitter thing wasn't happening this morning. And I had set a few paintings aside to show you. Some of these paintings involved a portrait of my bandmate. And he called me this morning. And um, we wound up talking for like two hours. So if you really think that there is no interconnectedness between us, man, like, I'm telling you, it's it's science. There's There's some interconnected web of quantum particles that connects us all the time. We just have to pay attention. So I'm trying to learn how to pay attention. But I'm going to play a song, and uh, you can tell me why I decided to play this one. <laughs> And uh, when we come back, I will show you some paintings that will soon be NFTs. <laughs> and go, I think. Oh, no. Yeah.
switch cameras a little early there. I felt naked. <laughs> so, best friend from Universe, and, um... Telemetry has been partially lost due to planetary distances. Now switching to particle band 13. Thank you for using SpaceNet. Did you hear that? That bit in the end? Particle 13. SpaceNet. <laughs> Those were clues. No one found that stuff. Universe has some crazy secret stuff in there too. <laughs> I'm going to have to start like giving out hints. So funny. Um, but yeah, and that, that, <laughs> that album actually has a few, quite a few, uh, which is really funny because as I start going back now and I start unearthing them because I've been going through some of the stuff on the anythingbox.com site and I was like, oh, wow, that's still there. I just have to point to it. So who knows? I, some, some of those things are going to have to come out of the woodworks now. So, so yeah, I had run out of pink flex seal and someone wrote that I'm the only one doing that stuff. I'm not. Um, but as far as I know, there's only three. Um... One was the guy who actually um, films some of the Flex Seal commercials. He's actually an accomplished artist, and uh, he's a painter in his own right. And I know that he used Flex Seal to do one or two pieces. I've seen them, and they were really cool. Because um, I had to, you know, once I started messing around with the stuff, I went back to see if anyone else was doing it. But he hasn't done much work with it. It's just like he did two pieces from what I can see. Most people use it for the textural effect, which is what's awesome about it. But I've been using it more as a, as a printer type effect. Like I use it as a printing effect, which is really weird. Nobody really would think to use it this way. And it's not easy to do, but I, for some reason, I found that I like working with it. So... It works for me, okay. So this is this is the last of my pink. I'm gonna show you the last of my pink, which happens to be a uh, a crypto art piece with wood, cardboard, um, even metal. So this is. Let's see if I can do this right. Oh, I can't tell. Hold on. Let's move this out of the way. There we go. Now I can see if I'm actually showing it. The camera doesn't do the colors justice, but there's a lot of textured things in there. Bits of cardboard, um, metal. That bit right there is metal. The thing that looks kind of like an Ethereum is actually metal. <laughs> so metal. So this um, was going to be one of my first uh, <laughs> NFT things on Mintable. So I wasn't expecting Flexiel to do a tweet right away. So I'm like, whoa. So they actually have, like everything else that's, else that's been going on, the energy level to continue to do it faster has happened. So I'm going to put this aside. So I was talking to Paul this morning. So that's that that was my bandmate, of course, Paul. And uh we talked for the first time in like nine months or so, because I guess we've just, you know, which is funny because we were in lockdown, but I mean the telephone wasn't locked down. So I don't know why we haven't talked more. But anyway, we're gonna try to get together and have lunch, which is awesome. We're both ready to come out of our holes and uh see each other and 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 talk so yeah so pablo and i will be um you know hanging out and i wanted to show him that the stuff that i've been doing uh involves portraits so you obviously saw hold on let me see if i can pull this up so yeah so you saw the cover of the the dead stars thing hold on let me see if i could pull up a better one. Nope. There we go. So I've been working a lot with portraits. Um, 
that doesn't mean they're all portraits, but I've been working a lot with portraits. And um, so I'm going to show you two portraits that I did of Paul from the uh, Electrodelica era. And this is Flex Seal. Here's number one. I think I've shown this one before, but this is going to be an NFT. Textures. That's all Flex Seal. And lasers. Lasers. <laughs> and here's, here's another one. So these are like original pieces and um, they're on photographic board. And so they're, they're going to be my first NFTs like soon on Calamint and all that. Now these, I haven't, I don't think I've shown these before. These were based around the Worth album. So I'll show you. These, these are not cut yet, so they're not sized. So it's a little bit odd looking at first pink and black flex seal and this one should be more obvious And, and the last one. So I've been working on this stuff for a year, um, getting my getting my feet wet. So so you know, so I, I'm I'm I was working on. We're going to do this 12 inch, then there's going to be another 12 inch, then there's going to be hopefully an A-Box EP, new stuff, and then eventually like some single, and then I was going to do some some gallery shows. Like this is how the trajectory was going, but I think that um, the unexpectedness of the pandemic brought me into a completely different direction, which is good in a weird way. It's like it put me in the right spot because now it's like it's a completely different world that I'm living in, which is kind of interesting to me. But um so anyway, it's nice that I can get these things out. So and it was nice talking to Paul today and it was Weird that he just happened to call when I was going to show his portraits today and the Flexio people. So that's what I mean by interconnected things. Intergalactic, as it were. Haha, <laughs> the East Coaster needs sleep. No, I'm having wine. Someone asked if I'm having lemonade. No, I am having wine tonight. It's good, too. Just a little, not a lot to cause damage, but among other things, I'm still working on that Temptation uh, cover for Robert's CD, and uh, I've never been so busy and so stuck inside at the same time. Like, I can't believe how busy I've been. So it's crazy talk, man. I'm going nuts. But someone asked a question. And I will answer it because I'm trying to be honest here because I, I think people are going to at, keep asking this question till the cows come home. Will I ever work with Danya and Paul ever again? And for that matter, you should ask me whether I will ever work with my brother Gary again or Dave um, or Sandra, and, you know, all these people that were part of my life. And the answer to that question, but more specifically with Donya and Paul is that, yeah, of course, I would. There's no reason not to. Um, 
it would just depend on the project, right? We're in different places in the world now. So not everything not everything can jive, you know, we're, in, we're, you know, who knows, maybe our tastes come back together for something and it's, and it works. I mean, I'm open to it. I'm never closed off to anything. So just know that I'm just never closed off. I'm just doing my thing. I know they're doing their thing. If it happens, awesome. You know, just awesome. I love my bandmates. I still do. Um, that's why we were on the phone for like two hours today talking about random stuff. So, um, and, you know, look at Mikey. Like, we wound up working together after 30-something years. I mean, that's that's wonderful to me. So, yeah, of course. Uh, I'm always open. But who knows? Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll turn the corner and suddenly I'll have a collaboration with someone that's completely different. I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how, I try not to second guess life. Um, and I think that when I stopped second guessing life, life suddenly changed for the better. So I think, I think that's the right path. Let, let things happen, make the right moves, but don't try to overanalyze what's going on. Just enjoy it. I guess that's what I'm saying. But uh, uh, last Saturday, by the way, I actually had lunch with Fega. I, I said it, Fega. It's just, uh, Fega and Claudio, by the way, which is really funny saying Claudio, by the way, because every time I'm saying Claudio, I have to picture you, Claudio, and not myself, because my name is also Claudio. So it's like strange talking to another Claudio. But but yeah, I had I had uh, pizza with Vega last week, and it was awesome. And we were talking all kinds of smack. <laughs> Um, or I was talking and they were like, oh my God, this dude is nuts. <laughs> but, um, you know, life is just, I don't know. You can't, you, you can't second guess it. You just have to enjoy it. So enjoy your life. Please enjoy your life. Um, so anyway. <laughs> I should play a song now. I should. Let's see. What did we not play? No, 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 no. Okay. So this particular song is funny because um, I'm going to play it. And then again, I want you to guess why I played it. Like what would have motivated me to play this song tonight of all the things that I could have played? So just, just go with it. Just give me your best guess as to why. I played the following song. I will turn on the UFO cam. That's what I'm calling this one. And go. I can see, I can see. Although the future isn't free. I gave in, you gave out. And this robot inside of my head.
So can you guess why I played that one? No guesses? No no takers on that? Um, well, I played that one because when I wrote that particular song, I was actually thinking about moving away from California. True story. And um, the weather kind of kept me in. And as I was going through the tracks today, uh, I realized that I may not stay in California, which is weird. So, and so it was about like this, I don't know, <laughs> this idea of California falling into the ocean. And I had had weird dreams about that too, by the way. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I may stay. I may not. But the the idea that that song's vocals are coming back though is kind of cool because this is one of those weird ones where I was like, man, I wonder if anyone could do a synth remix of this. Like, could it exist? And now it will be able to. <laughs> so, um, so uh, Hope April Eight on YouTube asked who created the Hope album art. And I did answer it on there, but I'll, I'll answer it here. I did the cover art. I did the hand coloring of the photographs. And depending on which version of the album you have, um, we had a cardboard version. And in the cardboard version, there was two additional panels. And Danya did those interior panels. And then we turned that into a um, jewel case for a while. And the two panels are on the inside. I believe in the booklet, and she did those. So, so yeah, she did some art for that. That was the time when she was like, how come you always do the art? And I was like, you can do it. Just give me some stuff. And then she did those two panels, and I loved them. So I was like, yeah, we're going to use those. And she was like horrified. <laughs> she didn't think I was serious. And I was like, no, I'll use them. And so we wound up using her art on the inside. But I actually like those two pieces. I don't even know where those are. I have to ask her where those are. They could be worth something someday. I don't know. I'll have to hit her up and ask her about that. I hope she kept them. Um, Because uh, I don't even know that I have a scan of those now that I think of it. Do I? Hmm. I'll look and see if I have a scan of it when when I play the next song. And then I'll let you know if I have them. Because I actually don't know. Um, Interesting. But anyway, so it was nice um, to hear from my bandmate today. And it was totally awesome to have a conversation about life and getting back into, you know, music. <laughs> Constantino says, NFT the panels. Uh, yeah, I could, but those aren't mine. So I'm nice. I'm not going to like NFT her art. But that's something she should definitely do. <laughs> I would definitely think that she should do that. TMT mixes. He's saying, it's something that I miss about physical releases, admiring the album cover art while listening to the music. Digital music isn't quite the same. You know, I agree with you to a certain degree. And I, and, and I mean this, like, to a certain degree. Because I love the idea that when you take a 12-inch, as a good example, and... Um, you put on you put it you put the record on and you're listening and you're staring at the art and you're trying to figure things out that you're seeing it's such a cool experience and you really get into the music as packaging got smaller we sort of lost that so i agree with you as packaging got smaller we lost that ability however what i found interesting is that and I don't know, maybe it's because I think differently, because I'm in different disciplines of of uh, creating things. I always thought that there was room to do really creative things with packaging that just never happened. So, I mean, here's an idea that I had. Here, I'll share an idea. Hold on. Let's pretend.
So I was looking through this uh, Sotheby's catalog. And if you look inside, you can see it's chock full of art, right? So you can see that, like, you know. Uh, well, now, when, now when I'm looking for cool stuff, I can't find it. Um, well, let's just say. Ah! So let's just say. So you have art and you have a book. Why couldn't someone release something like this where the SD card is inside and that's where the music is? And um, so you're listening to really, really good 24-bit files that sound really awesome, but you have a book. You have a tactile thing that you're holding in your hand. So these are like, these are like things that I've wanted to do for a long time. You know, so, you know, like someone, uh, whoa, the computer just did something weird. Okay. I don't know what just got installed, but something got installed. <laughs> but, um, but it's one of those things where, like, some friends of mine, and because and, I have friends that are artists, and so there's a few that have reached out to me and saying, are you getting into this NFT thing because there's there could be a lot of money in it? Because this is a really honest question, and I think it's a good question to answer on air and be totally honest with it. Is the money the motivator? Mm, no, I don't think it's any more motivating than like making an album and hoping that you sell a million copies of it. No one hopes to sell nothing, you know, you, you don't make a record thinking, I hope only 10 people buy this, you know, you, you hope that a lot of people will buy it. Um, but you're not thinking of it like, because I want to be rich, you may be thinking, because then I get to do other things. And to me, it's always been other things. Like, if you look at my room, everything that I've ever earned went into this room, like, Every, like, I, I swear to you, if I make 200 bucks, it's like, oh, I can upgrade the mic. Oh, I can get a better camera. Oh, I can do this. Like, it, it always has to do with an expansion of what I'm doing. And let me tell you, I've been wanting to make books, uh, picture books, very specifically, for a long time. And um, I used to tell the band about it, like, all the time. Like, the next album has to be a book. And we would look into it and it was like, oh, it's going to cost us 11 grand just to put a book together. <laughs> and some of it is really expensive. Like it, it can cost a lot of money. Um, and so the, the detraction to that was, well, even if we put this together and we have to sell this book for, you know, let's just say 20 bucks, um, we still have to come up with the dough to do it and the time to lay it out and all that stuff. So it was always the deterrent. Um, but now I'm thinking I've got more time and should the NFT thing work um, and more touring happen, I'm going to actually do it. I'm going to I'm gonna sit down and the next, I swear, the next A-Box album is going to be a book. I'm not even joking. I'm going to make, I'm going to make that happen. I don't care if it's a hardbound book that has 16 pages, it's going to be an effing book so that I can say you will have a tactile thing and you will have something you can look at and touch. And to me, that's like, I, I like both. I like having both things. So, but as far as a CD goes and like having a CD case, the thrill of making CDs is gone for me. Like, I don't know that that's something I want to do. Vinyl was great. I just, we're doing one, but I don't know that vinyl is the answer either. So it will be for a time, but I think a book is, is the one. I think a book is in the future. I can just see it. I can see it in my head. Like I know what it looks like. And if it's not a book, I swear to God, it's going to be a zine. It's going to be a newspaper. I don't care. I don't even care if it's a newspaper, for God's sake, and that you get it on Bandcamp <laughs> with an SD card. But I'm going to make some sort of paper something, and it's going to be bigger, or I don't know. That's what I want. 
is it wrong for me to want that? I don't know, but that's what I want. I don't, I don't want just records and I don't want just CDs and I don't want the traditional sense of it because I think there's more to it. So, you know, as Sue says, putting your earnings back into your work to create even better work. Exactly. So, you know, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to play a song. Then I'll come back and I'll tell you some stuff that I actually discovered about printing books, which is interesting because I'm telling you, I'm going to do it. <laughs> this song, um, I'm going to just introduce. So this one, I love the idea that the vocals to this song are coming back and that I'll have them because this is one of those weird songs that I never expected people to want to remix. But this is like literally, I'm not kidding. I literally get every couple of days, someone sends me an email that says, we want to remix this particular song. Do you have the vocals? And I'm like, no, sorry. And they're so disappointed. So like this one, like you would think it would be living in oblivion, but it's not. It's This is the song that I actually get requests for, remixes all the flipping time. So I'm so happy that the vocals to this song are coming because people will get to do that. So I'm happy. So anyway, UFO cam, no, just overhead. Ah, oh, yeah, this one. And this is the song. And it's not even an anything box song.
So, yeah, from page one, the diary, of course. My alter ego, my darker alter ego. Um, it's funny. I actually like listening to that record. It's so weird. It's such a strange record. It really is. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's really strange that that's the song that people always want to remix. And I'm, I've always been, like, sad that no one could do it, you know. And uh, just saying, Vega and Claudio and MD did a great, great version of this song. And I don't think I've played it yet. Have I played it? I don't know if I did. I don't think I have. But if I didn't, I'm probably going to play it next time because it's just awesome. Like, they did it justice. They did such a great job on this song um, that I will have to play it at one point. Um, but, you know, <laughs> see someone saying, the diary on vinyl, maybe the diary in a book. I don't know. It's kind of what I like about Bandcamp is that you can do weird things like that. So um, to get back to our conversation about books, um, I actually uh, looked into comic book printing, zine printing, newspaper printing, offset newspaper printing. I looked into all that. Uh, this week I was looking looking at some of that stuff. And for shorter runs, it's actually not so bad. So I could, you could see some really weird limited edition stuff. Um, and it would be kind of cool like to revisit some of that stuff and do it, do it nicer. Like, nine, see, yeah, see? 19 in a book with an SD would be badass. Exactly, because 19 was supposed to be a book. So it would be cool. Ah, you, you brought up something really cool, Sue. Sue, on Facebook, <laughs> said 19 in a book or SD would be badass. You know that that was the intention, right? It was supposed to be a book. If you, if you ever find, or you can get into the, uh, yes, I did say comic book, um, like a six by nine format. I think it would be so cool to have it, you know? Imagine, like... That's how I released the album as a comic book, <laughs> in a comic book format, among other things that I've been thinking about, like, recently. But, uh, yeah, 19, if you ever look at the original art, it was sort of done as a book. Like, it was meant to be sort of like a book. So... Um, again, the money didn't roll around enough for us to do that. It was too expensive then. But now things have gotten cheaper. It's really weird. So just to give you a rough idea, it's actually more expensive to print vinyl now than it is to print a book, I found out. So like if you do a short run of vinyl, let's give it, let, let me give you an example. If you wanted to do a hundred copies of vinyl with just a cover, um, it could run you about 17 bucks a copy to print it. Whereas a 32 page book in full color will cost you nine. So I think that's like, that's just crazy. Like the disparity between the two things, it's just, it's just nuts. So I've been looking more into printing and I think that because my art stuff that I do, like the visual side is very print oriented um, I really think that some sort of series uh, paired with the right, you know, paper paired with the right binding would be cool to have as a book. So I think that's what I'm working towards. So if you're wondering what I'm going to do with all that NFT money, it's that I'm going to go broke making books. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Um, and if I make no NFT money, then I'm going to go even more broke because then I'm going to struggle and do it anyway. <laughs> I'm, nothing's going to stop this. I am going to make a book. Nothing's going to stop me from doing that. I'm going to make a book unless I die. Could happen. That would be the only thing. Other than that, full force, man. I'm going to make it. Um... So, 
<laughs> Let's play a song. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Well, thank you for that. Someone said you will be successful. The anything box book. Um, well, you know, look, this is how I measure the success. I measure success by getting to hang out with you guys. That's success. Being able to meet some of you face to face and have have pizza on an on a weird weekend. That's success. Um, I measure it. I measure it more on a day to day basis. So success for me is like if I wake up, and this is a true story. I'm not. I'm. I'm not kidding here. This is like a real. This is how I really feel about this. Every day that I wake up, I feel that's a success. Like, oh my God, I got to live another day. I'm alive. And if I can look around and say, most of the people that I know are still alive, and I didn't lose anyone today, that's success. If I got to create something new and bring something new to the world, that's success. If someone calls me up or sends me an email and says, hey, you just, you changed my life or because, because of you, this happened and I want to thank you for it. Or, hey, uh, I want to ask you a question. Can you answer this question? Because I'm struggling as an artist and I want to get this done. Can, can you give me like two minutes? Whenever I get a chance to do stuff like that, that's success. Everything else, it's just gravy. Like, that's the gravy, man. When you have really, when your relationships grow, that's success. So, you know, that's what I mean. So, anyway, that's how I view success. So, you know. Um, so, I'm going to play something because we're moving right along. We're doing good. We're doing, we're making the right time today. Um, <laughs> so this next one is from Electrodelica. This is actually one of my favorite songs, but again, I want you to guess as to why I'm playing it. And, um, oh, thank you. Uh, Liliana Arazipe says, it's a wonderful way to measure success. Thank you. Um, that's, that's how I've, that's how I've managed to keep most of my, uh, my sanity in the, in the business that I decided to get into because it's such a crazy thing. Like it could literally destroy people. And, um, I can't say that it's been easy, but I think because I kind of keep, keep that on my radar, um, I think that's made my life a little bit easier. That's why I can take things in stride. It's like, no gigs. Okay, but I'm alive. I can create stuff. No pink flex seal. Okay, there's black. <laughs> you know, you got to always find like what drives you forward. It could be the tiniest, dumbest thing. But if it makes you happy, you should do it. So anyway, I'm going to play a song. <laughs> it's the wine talking now. But this is one of my favorites. And let me see if you can figure out why I chose this one. And then before the evening's over, we have the chaos moment because you have to have a chaos moment. So.
Making me laugh. Oh my God. Oh, I see. Wow. Tell me if that's better. Is that better somehow? Is it back? Is it working? That's so weird. I didn't do anything. <laughs> I literally did not do anything. Oh my God, it's so funny. All right, sound is good. <laughs> sound is good. And you know what's funny? See, this is what I mean about the universe. What did I say when I played Heaven 60, right? I said, when we come back, it'll be that chaos moment. And I even just by saying that, see what happened? We had chaos. Oh my God. And it had nothing to do with that. So we're back? <laughs> oh, or is it just because I stopped talking? Oh, man. And I told like this heartfelt story about my dad and all this stuff, and none of you heard it. I guess it wasn't meant to be heard this time. So in my hand... And we can turn off the ticker now. In my hand, I'm holding this uh, VHS, which I'm going to play a song off of it. That was supposed to be the moment of chaos, not the mic going out. Ah, that just makes me so sad. <laughs> it makes me sad, that's all. Just makes me sad. Um, so I'm going to play something. Uh 
when we were playing this stuff from Mexicali, it occurred to me that this particular VHS may be the one where everything went nuts and the show had to be shut down. And I think this may be the one. So I don't know what's on this tape, so I don't know what's next. So I'm going to play something off tape. Then we play one more song, and then the evening's over. But we're going to play a video now. This was, this was supposed to be the chaos moment because I wouldn't know what was happening. Not that I was going to just suddenly start chopping audio. And I hope it's not chopping up still. Because I can't, I can't tell. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I want to try something. Hold on. Tell me if this messes me up. Is this messing me up or can you guys hear me just okay? Is everything good? Or am I just... All right, so everything's good. All right. I'm going to play the video then. Video going in. Switching to VHS. And let's see what we got. We got nothing. <laughs> hmm. This song you should know. Yeah. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> it's a blank canvas. Oh, man. We are not worthy. Oh, man. That's so sucky. Ah. Uh, no, I think what happened is that it's decided to mess up, and I can't do anything about it at the moment. Oh, man. <laughs> it's probably the video cable, but... I don't know. I don't know that we should be messing with it while while I'm on stream, but I guess we'll play something else. Anyway, it's 10 o'clock and I'm supposed to be off. Oh, man. All right. I'm going to play one last song and then I'm going to have to call it a night. And I think that I think the universe is trying to tell us something. So I'm going to end it on a, on a, on a wild note. I'm going to pick a rabbit out of the hat from the endless songs that were on the screen. Hold on. <laughs> no way. No flipping way. Okay. It is definitely, definitely uh, a funny one. Well, that When We Lie is in our YouTube channel. I think that's the one that you see when you go into our YouTube channel. That came from this show. So that so at least that one I know is what, what it is. So I'll, I'll be able to clean the tape up for next week and we'll see what's next on that tape. Um, but maybe we'll start the thing with that. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. It's getting weird. So I'm going to play the last song and then I'm going to say good night. Um, it has been awesome hanging out with you guys, by the way. I'm just, it's that time. So I'm going to play the last song. Um, I kind of chose this at random, and I got lucky that this is the last song, which is really weird. So we end off with the diary. And this is a song that will be remixable as well, but I don't know that anyone in their right mind would want to remix this one. But I kind of like this song. But it's going to end the evening. And after this, I will go, and I will see you next week. And I will see you online all week. Um... There's some cool stuff happening this week, so I'll, sh I'll share that stuff as it goes along. It's easier to share stuff now um, as it's happening. So, UFO cam in place. Last song cued. And I'm going to take you away with um, a song from the diary that I, I, I like a lot. And that's it. Take your time 
I'm, I'm tired of it. I, I'm. Can't you see it? <laughs> 